hip hop is ancient. I could find rap in your all African oral tradition going back 2,000 years. And hip hop really is just fulfilling the need for the community when we're up against the wall. And for centuries, African Americans enslaved, repressed, denied even the right to learn to read and write, found the normal outlets of expression and protest close to them. And this forced them to find alternative ways, verbal and nonverbal, to articulate their feelings. English language itself has an internal rhythmical power that goes very well with beat, any kind of beat. These two plots we can define as a story of survival, the Odyssey, and a story of combat, the Iliad. And we can trace the same sort of plot lines from Homer, not really through Western literature, but sort of popping over to hip hop. Well, what helped to sustain African Americans through bondage and the torture of freedom has been a rich, oral, expressive tradition. From the plantation tales, the folk beliefs, the proverbs, and the dozens, to the spirituals, the gospel songs, the hollers, the work songs, blues, jazz, R&B, and rap. I'm going back to the scene of the rhyme where I left off memories of those seas that I swept off the microphone with a brisk with motion. It rose out of our need for our own self-expression. We didn't want to have to get dressed up and go to a club to, to, to dance. Some of us weren't old enough to get in clubs. The only way you're going to get the real, real story is from people that lived it. You know, it wasn't told to us. You know, we, we, we didn't learn it, we lived it. George Moses Hartman was such an important poet uh, that we need to revive him by using the AR and VR technologies. This will allow us to actually hear his voice or as close as we can get to his voice. It also gives us a chance to see the world that he lived in, which was the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. And uh, this university was an uh, antebellum university, the first the largest university in the South at that time. And Horton was a slave who uh, managed to find respect among the students at the university. And uh, many of the students uh, loved Horton's poetry and Horton himself, and often thought that this would be a good example of African Americans after slavery, because he was he was interested in education as a way to free African Americans. And it was his uh, ambition to be a great poet that resulted in three wonderful books of poetry that he published in his lifetime. Let me hear your song again. Okay, it's a hymn. Are you ready? I'm ready. Rise up, my soul. We all enter free. Can I see it? Can I have it? It's yours. Instead of saying, I hate you, Pharaoh, why don't you say, I love you? Why would I do that? Then I could give it to Miss Caroline. Why would you give it to Miss Caroline? Oh, I get it. You want me to make a poem for Miss Caroline? Yes. If you do, I'll give you 25 cents. Okay. Rise up, my love. Let us go. Caroline Hentz. To the much distinguished Mrs. Hentz of Boston, I owe much for the correction of many poetical errors. Being a professional poetess herself and a lover of genius, she discovered my little uncultivated talent and was moved by pity to uncover to me the beauties of correctness. 
to you, fair miss. I want or two to let thee know. My pure design for writing is my love to be to show? I have to think about this. I must thy beauty praise, the object of my whole delight, on whom it is my joy to gaze, as on the moon by night. I like that line. Go on, fair miss. And if we no more meet, while here upon the earth we dwell, the thought of these will still be sweet, so lady, fare thee well. Then fare thee well, fair miss. And then fare thee well, kind sir. And not to say farewell, fair miss. What a lovely poem you wrote to me. Please come and see me again. Maybe I will need a bow warrior after all. Thanks so much. Very well, kind sir. She loved my poem. My poem? Our poem. I need another one, though. I can't. Why not? Massa is sending me to sell fruit in the farmer's market, Chapel Hill. Uh, no, I need a poem, George. I want to reply to her. Goodbye. Well, the, the most uh, impressive of the technologies is uh, being able to um, bring back uh, a picture of what we look like by using the uh, technology of um, AR and VR, we have a picture based on the actual DNA uh, of uh, Hort's descendant. His descendant I found in North Carolina, still living in the same town that Hort grew up in in 1830s. Uh, his name is Marion Hort, and he was very happy to give me a photograph which we were able to use to reconstruct the picture of what Hort most likely uh, looked like. Represented by an avatar, which will allow you to talk and converse with or also. So these devices allow us to take some to, uh, some measure of getting closer to who Horton really was and the world that he really lived in. Hi, George Moses Hart. Can you tell us who you are? I am George Moses Horton, a proud poet of the South. Well, can you give us? some idea of how you were able to write poems as a slave? Um, that was a difficult question indeed. Though I was a slave, I found solace in the written word and found a way to express my heart and soul through the written form. I wrote my first poem when I was a young man, still enslaved, and it was a way for me to tell my story and share my thoughts and feelings with the world. Can you make a poem up about the perils and the advantages of AI. I, I can create a poem for you on the promise and perils of AI. The promise of AI can be grand, for it can help us understand the world around us, so vast, and its potential will last. But with such power comes danger, 
for the tech can cause a stranger to control our lives and our fate and decide our future's date. We must be careful and wise, for AI can be a double-edged knife that can help us and harm us and leave us without a chorus. So as we move forward with AI, we must be aware of what it can be and use it in a responsible way so it can help us every day. I think with these and other devices, we'll be able to accomplish our aim, which is to bring the reader, the hearer, the viewer closer to the subject. Professor Marshall McLuhan was the first person to use technology to serve as a way of uncovering lost artifacts, lost sounds. He suggested that we live in an acoustic space. McLuhan thought that that went away with technology of writing, but that it re-entered man's consciousness with the invention of cyberspace. Cyberspace, which is what we get when we are are actually online, so to speak. Cyberspace is everywhere. Hi, this is George Morris Horton. I'm very happy to be here. I think we have a, a, a new beginning for oral cultures. Alas, am I Alas, born for this? Am I born for this? To wear this latest <laughs> chain. Hardship, toil, and pain. Hardship, toil, and pain. <laughs> Liberty, where's thy voice? Liberty, where is thy voice? Free me! Free me! I am George Moses Horton, a slave warden.